Yeah, man, I kind of been working hard this week, and I said I was going to take Saturday off, but, man, who am I kidding? Let's go ahead and get into this top 50 board. Uh, it's been sitting on Patreon for the past uh, couple of days or whatnot, I think about a week or so. So uh, let's go ahead and get this going and discuss it. And, of course, we're going to do a live stream later to uh, kind of get your reactions. This is me giving it to you, uh, and you all can react to it later. Here's my top 50 board. Shouts out to the graphic, Skywalker Steel hooked it up for me salute to him go check out his youtube channel he does some good cowboys content over there um but hey this is my top 50 board this is it y'all kind of consume it absorb it uh take down some notes and um you know prepare yourself for your disagreements that you may bring forth to me later on when we do this live stream or in the comment section however you choose to engage with me on that level um i got a couple notes i wanted to hit on a handful of these picks so um let me take a sip of water. We can run this for the cardio. Let me just get my, you know what I'm saying, get my water in my jug, right? Let me just, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Let's get started. Joe Burrow is my number one player. I think he's fantastic. He's amazing. I think he's the best quarterback in college football that we've ever seen. Um, Y'all can hit me with all the legends from the 60s. Well, Vach, what about Roger Staubach? What isn't he the best, uh, the best quarterback in college football? I seen Joe Burrow break every single college football record in the SEC, fam. <laughs> he did it against top ten teams. Like you know, shots out to Colt Brennan. You know what I mean? Like he broke some records. I know Graham Harrell did some things in his days, but they didn't play the 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 level of talent that Joe Burrow played. Um, so I definitely give him the edge. He's the top quarterback ever. So of course the the top quarterback ever is going to be the top quarterback uh, on my list. I think very very highly of Joe Burrow. Um, there may be some controversy with that because a lot of people will say that Chase Young is the best um, player in the draft altogether. Vach doesn't necessarily agree. Um, I think sometimes the pundits on the four-letter network, three-letter networks, I think they talk themselves in circles sometimes. For example, they'll say things like, oh, well, Jeff Okuda is the perfect prospect at cornerback. And then they'll say, well, Chase Young is the best pass rusher, but there are some other things that he may not do perfectly. They'll say that in the same breath and still put Chase Young over Jeff Okuda. I can't in good conscience do that. I think Jeff Okuda is a complete corner. I think Jedrick Wills is a complete uh, tackle. I think Tua is also a complete quarterback. If Tua's hip didn't have, uh, you know, some question marks behind it, we would be looking at Tua in the same you know caliber as joe burrow i i think joe burrow is better because of intangible things um but but tua is in my top five jedrick uh is in my you know top three akuda boom 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 jo joe burrow and chase young falls to my fifth overall player on my board i think that makes a little bit of sense um not to say that chase young is a bad player or anything and chase young could go out to be fantastic in the national football league salute to chase young um on that but um, in real life, I mean, I wish he was a little better versus the run. I wish he was a little more active. I wish I saw more effort. Um, hell, you know, people ask me, is he better than the, the Bosa children? I don't think he's better than the Bosa children. I think Miles Garrett is a better prospect than, than Chase Young as a, as a football player. Um, but Chase Young, but, but can Chase Young be the best pass rusher out of all of them? Sure. Absolutely. Indubitably 100%. Um, but we're, you know, when we're, talking about players this closely when we're talking about elite amongst elite 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 then you have to nitpick somewhere um and that's just me getting into that chase young bag isaiah simmons is going to be my number six guy that's cool some of y'all may notice that javon kinlaw is going to be on my list over Derek brown well i think the three tech position is a lot more important and you're going to run into more opportunities to be great at the three tech position Derek is going to be a one tech in my opinion um so uh Javon Kinlaw is going to run into a lot more one-on-one -on -one battles than Derrick Brown. Derrick Brown is going to run into more double teams naturally. So you so you 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 look at who's going to do their job better, right? I also look at Javon Kinlaw's ceiling. Javon doesn't really know how to play football just yet. He's just an athletic freak. So you put him at three tech and continue to develop him, then on top of his ceiling, on top of what he does great, on top of him playing three tech, getting those one-on-one -on -one blocks, possibly being more productive. I mean, hey, Derrick Brown could be fantastic 
too. I'm just saying, uh, Javon Kinlaw has the uh, has um, you know a handful of traits and notes that I put down that'll put him over Derrick Brown. But Derrick Brown up under here, we still got guys over him like C.D. Lamb and Andrew Thomas. I don't have to get into my C.D. Lamb bag. Y'all know how I feel about C.D. Lamb. I think he's fantastic. I don't think there's no player comparison for him. I just think he's that special. Um, People were asking me, is he a generational talent? No, I don't think he's a generational talent, but I do think he's a very, very, very special football player that's going to get plenty of Pro Bowls that could be the best receiver in the league at some point. I don't mean he's generational, but, you know, we'll see. But then again, we may have to revisit the generational talent conversation right because some would say that chase young is a generational talent but it ain't been a whole generation since we've seen a pass rusher as good as him bosa was just last year bosa was uh was the other bosa was in 2016 you know miles garrett was a little bit before that so how many generations do we have to go through b- before we find another talent like you there's plenty of pass rushers that have come out that have been as good as chase young how many receivers have come out in the past handful of handful or so years that have been as good as I think CeeDee Lamb is. That's interesting. So maybe we'll have to revisit that generational player conversation in terms of, of CeeDee Lamb. But I don't think he's generational, but I do think he's incredible. Um, Andrew Thomas is another player that I think is very, very close to being a complete uh, tackle. The only thing I wish he was a little bit better at is his consistency in the pass rushing, in the pass blocking game. But don't get me wrong. He's a really good pass blocker. His feet are really, really good. I think he puts the nipple on the titty in the run game. Um, But his problems in the pass, uh, the pass blocking field, I think can be fixed. He has the physical talents to be a good pass blocker. Uh, He just kind of got a little bit of uh, just a handful of nuanced things to work on. Those nuanced things. Things that Jedrick Wills has already, so that's that. Um, Derek Brown's fantastic. Uh, Grant Delpit, you know, he he seems to be a bit early for a lot of people, but this goes into the positional value conversation. Um, this isn't necessarily a conversation about where people are going to be drafted, because as you can tell, I got a running back at 18 there. This is a um, best player board a top 50 big board like what player is better than what player this player doing his job better than a, than some other guy you know where where how does that stack up right so you know safeties are getting devalued day by day by day by day by day so grand Delpit may be devalued because he's a safety in this class but grand Delpit as a free safety right if I'm putting Grant Delpit at free safety, and I'm, I'm only asking him to, t- to do free safety things. Vach, what about his tackling? I said I'm only asking him to do free safety things. Of course, free safety's got to tackle too. But as a free safety, your priority is to be last line of defense. Your priority is to have range from the middle of the field. Can you play one high, three high, two high? Can you do those things? Can you um and can you cover? I think Grant Delpit is fantastic in his coverage ability, his range, his football intelligence, his speed, all that good stuff kind of comes together in um, the enzyme collaborate and create a reaction to Grant Dub being a fantastic free safety. Him as a free safety is uh is why he's there at eleven. Um let's skip skip down to find something interesting. Um We've had the Justin Jefferson versus Jerry Judy conversation, but you see their tags are touching. I think Jefferson is better, but it ain't that, you know, it ain't by that much. Um, but, 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 Becton, I'm not sure Becton's there. What's, uh, so, okay, running back, right? Just because I have DeAndre Swift at, 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 uh, at player 18, I think he's really, really good. I think he's a fantastic running back, right? Um, I just don't think he's going to be drafted first round, and that's no, you know, that's no that's no hate on him. That's no real slight on him. Uh, I think Swift is a fantastic player, but, you know, we just kind of devalue running backs in terms of um, value. You know, I hate it. Let me say this. I agree that running back value is something that we have to reevaluate as, you know, football fans. But I don't agree with these with these knuckleheads, with these civilians, with these bottom feeders out here that are saying running backs aren't important. Run game isn't important. There are some people that, that there are some people that exist that go by the numbers so heavy, that go by analytics so heavy, that go by, you know, <sighs> that crap so heavy that they'll say, well, a pass play is more effective than a run play. Well, passing the ball to a receiver is more effective than passing it to a running back. And they'll really take the eye work out of football. There are some people that really think running backs are whack on that level. I, I ain't one of the people. Get that goofy ass mess up out of here. But DeAndre Swift, he's my number 18 player. AJ Epinesa is over uh, Caleb Von Chase on. Uh, I-, I-, I have a lot of faith in AJ Epinesa. I think he's a fantastic player. I think a lot of people have dropped him down the board 
was because of his athleticism. But if you watch that film where he's smoking hell out of people, that film where he's getting double digit sacks twice a year, that film where he lines up and guard and terrorizes in there as well, that's the same exact film that his athleticism wasn't really glaring there neither. So I don't understand why his athletic numbers would be the reason, uh, the, the 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 reason why he would fall in draft boards and people consider him a, a second round pick. Hey, I'll take it. If the Cowboys want to get AJ Epinesa in the second round, by all means, be my guest. Um, but I, I'm I'm not gonna sit up here and and comply just because everybody else is down on is down on AJ Epinesa. Part of my growth as a talent evaluator, I've only been doing this since like 2016. But as part of my growth as a talent evaluator, is to ignore the noise and to trust my own eyes. And AJ Epinesa. Um, being the second best pass rush or the second best edge player off the board is me trusting my own eyes. Um, Patrick Queen over Kenneth Murray, their tags are touching. I think they're very similar players, but Queen has the advantage to me because uh, I think mental processing is a real thing. I love players that mental process really well, and Patrick Queen mental processes his ass off. I hate people that guess. I don't hate it. I just don't prefer linebackers that guess. I don't prefer linebackers that, that pick incorrectly. I like guys that can make a decision and go. Uh, defenders, linebackers that can make a that can make a decision and pursue quickly, quickly, quickly. Queen does that. Um, and that's why I have Patrick Queen over Kenneth Murray. They're both are elite athletes. I would say that Murray is the better athlete than Queen. In my mind, I don't know if that's true. Combine nerds help me out. But in my mind, what I see on tape, uh, Kenneth Murray gets the uh, gets the athlete off a little bit more, just a little bit better than Patrick Queen do, uh, than Patrick Queen does athletically. But Queen ain't no scrub as an athlete. Also, Queen um, Queen's mental processing puts him over the edge there. Um, Justin Herbert in the 24th spot. There you go. I love Marlon Davis and put him at 25. Makes a lot of sense to me. These uh, wide receivers are going to fly off the board. Let me stop at 25 to do this as well. I had this pulled up for y'all. Just to, um, This is it in my list form. It looks a little wonky right here. So, um, hey, I... <laughs> Cause I know some of y'all can't see. Wait a minute. I know some of y'all got to gotta, gotta put your readers on to take a look at this. You know what I mean? Some of your eyes ain't the best in the world. There you go for the old folks. Uncle Charlie out there. He, you know, he probably can't see neither. Um, so, yes, uh, I put it in this form so we, I so I can see how many um, I can see how many of what position I have in my top 50. So I have four running backs, six defensive tackles, eight offensive linemen, um, four linebackers, six, edge, six edge guys, uh, seven cornerbacks. Mm, I think that's it. I think eight wide receivers. There we go. That's a new number there. I only got like what four quarterbacks, I think three quarterbacks because I ain't got Jordan Love on this. Yeah. So three quarterbacks sure sure and did i say corners already I, yeah down here i did seven corners so yeah that that um this number gives you an idea of how many positions i have in each um in each situation but i put that on twitter for y'all to see it so there we go um what else what else what else what i watched fights early on fight pass so <laughs> the old fights there uh what else what else what else what else is important zach bond at 32 i think that's interesting um i'm really high on cam dance i like trevon diggs um you could take that for what it's worth uh i'm a cowboys fan too and cowboys are linked to aj terrell aj terrell ain't on my list uh that don't mean he suck he just ain't on my list so um that's that's something else i had to kind of deal with antoine winfield is ranked over xavier mckinney if that means anything to you i think he's a better safety antoine winfield is my safety number two uh clyde it was a is my running back number two if that means anything to you i think that's another thing to shake this thing up kj hamler is here as a top 50 player for me james lynch as a defensive tackle right um, you know, I think he's going to be a three, four defensive end. Um, so that's a D tackle to me. You know, three techs and three, four defensive ends are very similar players. I like James Lynch. I put him up here, but I've been hearing some, some, some rumblings about him being like a first round guy. I don't know how I feel about that. James Lynch from Baylor. I don't know how I feel about that, but, um, I do have James Lynch there. Jordan Elliott, my one tech. Ooh, excuse me. There we go. Um, what else? What else? Yeter Gross Models way the hell down here. If he ends up in the second round, I won't hate it. Isaiah Wilson as another um, offensive lineman up there. Cam Akers has jumped up my running back boards. He's like my running back three or something like that. Um, as I continue to do my research, Cam Akers, I think what put Cam Akers over the edge, like his team was terrible. So any running back that has the ability to create to create space for themselves and then run. So like you behind the line of scrimmage, your offensive line is terrible. You need to get away from defenders. Him being able to create his own space and get away from those defenders put cam acres over the edge for me salute to him um 
Julian Lacroix is the name up here that we got here. Uh, who's my first center? Is Lloyd Cushenberry my first interior offensive lineman up here? Um, I know Tristan Wirfs is here as my offensive lineman 13, but if you watch my – well, he's my player 13, but if you watch my offensive lineman ranking videos or whatever, Tristan Wirfs is my tackle number five because Josh Jones is my tackle number four. Josh Jones is right there. He's my tackle number four. But Tristan Wirfs is my guard number one. It just depends on what you want to do with it. The next interior guy on my list is um, Lloyd Cushenberry at center. And then we get into Lucas Niang I think, uh, from TCU. I think Lucas is uh, going to be a guard for us. Um, Neville Galmore and Jonathan Taylor running back from Wisconsin. I think he's really fantastic. I just want somebody to glue the damn football to his hand so he don't drop it all right that's my top 50 board man some guys that didn't make it of course brandon Ayuk didn't make it ross blacklock didn't make it nothing against those guys i just think those are two guys that got to develop a little bit more uh they could be great in the national football league after they grow up some um you know work on some some techniques and things get bigger and stronger sure but they're, they just happen to not be on my top 50 list um run uh wide receivers that didn't make it on to here um I got a lot of receivers on my list, but hey, man, there's a handful of guys that 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 didn't make it. The last guy to make it was, it should be like Hamler or something. Mm, yeah, Hamler right here at 35 was my last receiver to make. No, Ayuk. Okay, cool. So Ayuk is there. So yeah, I mean, hey, just go go look, go look and see. Go <laughs> go find it. Go 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 and go and find my wide receiver list, and you'll see the guys that that didn't make the list. Uh, Van Jefferson didn't make my my top 50 list. I love Van Jefferson, but um, I can only put 50 on here. But I think he's going to be a really great receiver. Um, hey, man, um, take a look at it. Like I said, take a look at this. You know, take your notes and all that. I just wanted to touch on a few highlights here. Uh, of course, you can feel free to disagree anywhere. You can feel free to call me out anywhere. If y'all want to discuss, we can do it with you. It, it, who cares? It don't matter. Let's discuss it and disagree and talk about it. I'm going to do a live stream later. That live stream, may, it may not be too, too long, um, but we'll see. We'll probably do it at like 6, um, six Central Time because um on instagram babyface is gonna battle teddy riley and i think that's a big event that i need to be tuned into so that's gonna be at eight central so i'm gonna give y'all a show from six central and we're gonna finish before eight so that may be like an hour and a half show y'all know we've been doing these these longer shows lately so uh tune into that but till then man i'll see y'all later y'all hold it down for the doski woski the peaceski whiskey is free uh comment section tell me what y'all think of my top 50 board until next time peace the YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.